Dear brothers and sisters, Annuncio Vobis Gaudium Magnum. Abemus. Mr. Neff, Mr. Neff. E, Mr. Neff, che facciamo? Abemus. JP. Oh, sure. Radio International. Hello, this is Amandine Bourgeois from France, and you are listening to Radio International with JP. <laughs> and this is my song, L'Enfer et moi. Yeah! Je vais te faire Hello, this is El Sueño de Morfeo from Spain. You're listening to Radio International with JP. And this is our song from Diva Hasta Final. Enjoy. I'm Natalie from Cascada from Germany. You're listening to Radio International with JP, and this is my song, Glorious. Enjoy. <laughs> Hello, this is Eric Saade from Sweden. You're listening to Radio International with GP. And this is my song, Popular. Enjoy it.
is about to hit this city. What are we going to do now? Radio International. Oh, joy. The official spokesperson to the Eurovision Broadcasting Union, the EBU. You're listening to Radio International with JP. It's amazing. And he's playing with the Ivories. Hello there. Welcome back to Radio International, the ultimate Eurovision experience for the next four hours. And we're going to have Eurovision royalty in the house in the next hour. Live, joining us from Copenhagen in Denmark, the winner of the Eurovision Song Contest 2013, Emily de Forest. We're looking very much forward to that. To be chatting with Emily about her Eurovision experience and, of course, her career. For that, I'll be joined by Salman and uh, John. And that's in the second hour. In the first hour, David Mann, the birthday file. We got uh, new releases for you uh, of Eurovision artists and as well some more tunes of Eurovision artists whose birthday it is this week. Also a couple of requests already in there. The Eurovision Lordship, Marcus Keppel Palmer, will be joining me from Bristol from his ivory tower. And we're going to be doing the Eurovision Spotlight, taking a look at Eurovision entries performed in Italian, but not by Italian artists. And then in the fourth hour, we have the Eurovision cover spot with Sir David Mann. And the Eurovision news this week is kindly supplied to us by ESCExa.com's editor-in-chief, Nathan Vodell. Wow. All that in the show for the next four hours. So sit back, relax and enjoy it. If you want to get in touch with us, you can do that live on Wednesdays. We are also available on the Facebook page Eurovision Radio International. As well via Castle Point FM today. And click on the first post on Eurovision Radio International on Facebook page. There's a link called Minute. And there you can as, as well chat with the other fans joining us live from the Facebook world. I'll tell you more about where we are also available a bit later on. We have new material by Vanilla Ninja coming up. The young girl band back in 2005 or 2005 from Estonia but representing Switzerland at the Eurovision Song Contest and they got a new song out but first let's go and listen to their entry that they had at the Eurovision Song Contest in 2005 Radio International for all the fans of the Eurovision Song Contest Switzerland 2005 Remember the cool vibes? Tear my heart apart Don't do that Though people say that you're my enemy I know you can set me free Don't want you To come so close to me Don't need you To blow my fantasy But I know That you are living far beyond the line I can see the danger I Why didn't you kill me?
don't you kill me? Cool vibes, wow. Vanilla Ninja, and we had one of the ladies on the show a few weeks ago in our interview hour, in the second hour, which today is filled with Eurovision royalty. Emily DeForest joining us there. Now, Vanilla Ninja actually are uh, Estonian descent, and uh, they just represented Switzerland because they might not ever have enough singers at that time in 2005. They got as high as number eight for Switzerland. Didn't they do well? And just as October was drawing to a close, October 2021, they threw on the market a new song. A new release in Estonia. We're going to have it for you right away. It's called Driving Through the Night. And that's all right here. Bringing you the magic of Eurovision. Radio International with JP. <laughs> New. New, 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 new Hold me for this one last time Hold me while you can Your smile will follow me around Your wild eyes set the scene I don't know the reason for it why I have to go I'm driving through the night And you won't find me I'm driving through red lights To be free And know my heart is pointing the other way I don't push the brakes Turning down the headlights now Turning down my fear Don't need a license for my pride Still feel you by my side I don't know the reason for Why I have to go I'm driving through the night And you won't find I don't know the reason for 
Vanilla Ninja and Driving Through the Night. Sverige, vi har ett resultat. We had a great Melody Festival in yet again this year, but without audience in uh, January till March. 28 songs through four semi-finals and the second chance round into the grand final. Out of that, Tusse represented Sweden at the Eurovision Song Contest as he was the winner of Melody Festival. But in... The semi-final two, there was a young gentleman by the name of Patrick Jean, who actually is also a songwriter and wrote the song for the Mamas last year, Move. And Patrick tried himself to take part. He didn't make it into, uh, he, did, he did make it out of semi-final two, I should say. He only reached number five and only positions one to four advance. In this Melody Festival, and that's the rules. But uh, let's go and listen to Tears Run Dry, and then we're going to have Jean pa- Patrick Jean's new song that's called Nam, right here on Radio International, the ultimate Eurovision experience. Sweden. Another drink in the bar for you order a car. We start falling apart. I'm not ready, that's all. No, we don't. Patrick Jean and Tears Run Dry and this one was in Melody Festival in 2021 as he uh, was the songwriter for Move and uh, then he tried himself to get a ticket into the grand final and uh, number five only in semi-final two he need to be in the top four to advance but now let's go listen to his new song that's called Num and that was released only last week let's have a listen New New Maybe I'm too used to the pain Maybe it's all there's an overcame Cause baby I don't know what to say I kinda 
and I think I'm doing okay. Maybe I pushed it all away. Maybe it's the music in this place. This baby, I don't know what to say. I kinda think I'm doing okay. Bet you hold you hurt me bad, and I've never been this sad. Crying rivers for you, but I can't feel it. I'm just way too busy trying to dance. Should be missing what we had. Crying rivers for you, but I can't feel it. I'm just numb, numb, numb. I'm just numb, numb, numb. I'm just numb, numb, numb. I can't feel it. I'm just numb, numb, numb. I'm just numb, numb, numb. I'm just numb, numb, numb. I can't feel it. Maybe I'm dumb for getting high. Maybe it's another glass of wine. Maybe I don't know what to say. So good. That's called Numb, and this is by Patrick Jean out of Sweden. Now, we got a request on the way now from uh, Javier Leal in Montreal, Canada. He said to me, well, when he figured out that we're going to have Emily the Forest on the show today, he said, you've got to play that song by Lisa Kabler. Or Kabler. Cable, Lisa Cable, Danish this is, is a Danish singer and songwriter and she has written more than 10 songs for the Danish national selection to the Eurovision Song Contest. That's called Dance Quality Grand Prix. She did uh, Fra Molt Til Skagen, which was Denmark's entry to the Eurovision in 1995. You're going to hear that in just a few moments. And also... She was responsible for the winning song of the Eurovision Song Contest. Only teardrops. And we're going to have Emily the Forest with us in the next hour. So Lisa has been co-writing the uh, this song. But besides that, she has also been, been writing many other songs for the national finals in uh, uh, Denmark. And uh, uh, also she did take part in the writing of uh, A Friend in London, A New Tomorrow, which was Denmark's entry in uh, 2011 in Dusseldorf. And as the, the list is endless, basically. I'm not going to go through all of that, but uh, you can find out more on Wikipedia if you like. It's Lisa and then C-A-B-B-L-E. And she herself released a song in September. It's a very short one, though. It's only one minute, 27 seconds. And that's for Javier Leal in Montreal, in Canada. Summer is so hot, I will. Summer is hell, I will. Look and blow fun, I will. It all I play. All that we throw upon. All that we hope upon. Himlen var ekstra blå Et øjeblik Et øjeblik uh, uh, uh. Himlen var ekstra blå Et øjeblik Så vi det alt for sent Gjorde vi alt for 
Wow, that's a rather short one, though. This one, uh, Ed Overjelik. That's what it is. But probably it sounds a bit uh, different when a Danish person pronounces it. But and that's Lisa Cable uh, from Denmark. She also has been writing the song for Leonora, Love is Forever, which she presented to the Eurovision World in 2019. The lady that sat on a huge chair on uh, the stage in Tel Aviv. But now, here comes our little trip on the time machine. Denmark. Hi there, this is Art Wilken. I'm, well, where am I, am I from? Denmark, Germany, America. And you are listening to Radio International with JP. And this, my song, what is it? From Molstis Game. Please enjoy it. Beautiful piece of music there. Number five at the Eurovision Song Contest 1995 for Denmark, Out Wilken, and from Mold to Skagen. Same songwriter, Lisa Cable, as our guest in the second hour today, Emily De Forest, the winner of Eurovision 2013. That's coming. But now, without further ado, he's impatiently waiting in the wings in Studio 3 in London. So David Mann is coming up with this week's edition of The Birthday File. Radio International. Oh, I love it. Europe's number one. Yeah. It's 
to Eurovision birthday time now here on Radio International and our list of artists who've been blowing out the birthday candles this week takes us from the Baltics to the Balkans and well beyond and also includes two Eurovision winners. Our artist with the earliest date of a Eurovision participation on the list this week is Conny Frobois, who sang for Germany at the 1962 contest in Luxembourg. Greetings also go to Horvath Karoli, more simply known as Charlie, Hungary's representative in 1998, to Nelly Kroman, Moldova's singer in 2009, to Vanya Radovanovic, who represented Montenegro in 2018 in Lisbon, to Tamar Kaprelian, a member of Armenia's international vocal group Genealogy in 2015, to Fausto Leali, who partnered Anna Oxer for Italy in 1989, to Esther Smilgevic-Jute, Lithuania's 1989 singer, to Alexander Ivanov, or simply Ivan, who danced with the wolves on the backdrop rather than live was on stage for Belarus in 2016, to Sara Jovanovic, a member of Moya 3 for Serbia in 2013, and to Sweden's 2011 representative in Dusseldorf, three-time Melody Festival and competitor, former Melody Festival and host and Eurovision spokesperson Eric Sada. It's also been time to cut the birthday cakes this week for Maja Tatic, Bosnia and Herzegovina's 2002 singer, for Isabella Page Jozeski, or Bella Page, Australia's 2015 junior Eurovision representative, for Severin Ferrer, who sang Monaco's song in 2006, for Kim Kahnfalk from Sweden's group Friends at the 2001 contest and who was also one half of the duo Nina and Kim at Melody Festival in 2004. For Nuo Duarte or Yell, a member of Portugal's Homens de Luta in 2011. And for two more Serbian Eurovision artists, Tiana Bogicevic from 2017 and Jelena Tomasevic from 2008. From 2021's Eurovision Song Contest, Alexei Kaunisvezi, a member of Finnish group Blind Channel, has been celebrating his birthday this week, as has North Macedonia's representative, originally selected for 2020, Vasil Govan Liev, or simply Vasil. Also celebrating this week is Raquel de Rosario, a member of Spanish group El Sueño de Morfeo from 2013, Moldova's Ana Obodescu from 2019, Stefan Gefeller, one half of brother and sister act Zips for Switzerland 2018, and two UK representatives, guitarist Bruce Welsh, a member of The Shadows for the UK at the 1975 contest, who's celebrating his 80th birthday, and UK Eurovision winner Lulu, one of the four-way tie winners at the contest in Spain in 1969. And we've two golden competitors with birthdays this week too. Louis Herre, one of the three Herre brothers who took the victory for Sweden in 1984, who we'll hear from in a minute or two, as well as Israel's golden boy from 2015's contest in Vienna, Nadav Gedj. Hi, Shalom, this is Nadav Gedj from Israel. You're listening to Radio International with JP. And this is my song, Golden Boy. I hope you enjoy it. Mama, someone broke my heart again. Tell her I don't think I can take it anymore. Whoa, mama, someone broke my heart again. Now I'm gonna ease my pain. Dancing on the floor Take me out I'm not in the mood for a broken heart Gonna dance tonight Forget her No, she doesn't know what I'm doing on the floor Did you say hello, my ladies? Oh me, baby, I'm your trigger You know that my love is bigger Love, 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 love
We are the Hoorays. And you are listening to Radio International with JP. And this is our winning song of the Eurovision Song Contest 1984. Digaloo, digalay. Big thanks to David Mann for a fantastic Eurovision birthday file. And he'll be back in our four. The Junior Eurovision Song Contest on Radio International with JP. Junior stands for you and me, J-E-S-C. We are Junior Eurovision Song Contest. It's that time again of the year where Europe is gearing up. 
for the daughter of the Eurovision Song Contest. It is the Junior Eurovision Song Contest. That's taking place this year rather late. It's going to be on the 19th of December. And it's the 19th edition of the contest with 19 countries competing. And it's coming out of uh, Paris and France. And last year's winner was uh, Valentina. The very first victory for France with J'imagine, written by Barbara Pravi, who we saw at the Eurovision Song Contest this year, coming second. With the song Voila, of course. There'll be Albania, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Bulgaria, France, Georgia, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Kazakhstan, Malta, the Netherlands, North Macedonia, Poland, Portugal, Russia, Serbia, Spain and Ukraine. The venue is going to be, going to be in La Seine, uh, Musical Paris in France. And uh, we don't have the host as yet. We we'll keep you up to date, of course, as well. Our newsman Nathan Modell in our third hour today will be giving us an update sure as uh, if, if he has the information we'll, we'll be uh, getting that all to you there and tickets have gone on sale already this week details you can find how to get to the tickets via the official website of the junior eurovision song contest when you google it alternatively you find details via wikipedia by searching for junior eurovision song contest 20 21. Now, since David Mann, my dear colleague in uh, the United Kingdom, is very fond of uh, those singing wasps. I always keep k calling them bees. <laughs> but in fact, it was wasps winning the contest in 2008 for Georgia, which is actually the most successful country in terms of winning the uh, Junior Eurovision Song Contest. Here comes the group Zucchetti, and the song is called Bzz. 2008. Georgia. David, that's for you. How lovely this is. It's Georgia's entry. The very first victory for Georgia. Bzzz. 
Bzzz by the Wasp called Bzzkebi for David Mann in, uh, in, the United, <laughs> so in the United Kingdom. It just twisted my tongue there, this Bzzkebi. Um, now, uh, yeah, they will be, of course, uh, well, maybe, maybe they might be making an appearance at Eurovision this year. Who knows? Junior Eurovision this is. Flying around there, uh, the busy bees. But anyway, let's now go to have another birthday kit now. In fact, a couple of more. And uh, uh, Bella Page represented Australia at the very first, uh, for the very first time at the Junior Eurovision Song Contest that Australia took part and the song called My Girls. And Bella Page is celebrating her birthday this week. And in fact, she is now just young, 21. Australia. Debuting at the Junior Eurovision Song Contest with a great song in 2015, Bella Page and My Girls. Hit number eight. Happy 20th birthday. One more birthday child, as we heard on the, on the, uh, um, uh, David Mann's birthday file today. Uh, besides of Eric Sorder, who is celebrating 31 and opened up the show this week. What well, popular went to number three, uh, in 2011 at the Eurovision Song Contest for Sweden. Now this lady is 47 this week and it's Nelly Siobanu from Moldova. Uh, she was singing the dance from Moldova in 2009. Number 14. For Moldova. Moldova. 2009.
Did you do the Moldavian Moldovian dance? <laughs> Nelly Siobanu. Ora Dean Moldova and that one was number 14 in the grand final of the Eurovision Song Contest in 2009 that came to you from the Olympijski Arena of Moscow in Russia and Norway won that one remember Alexander Rybak with Fairy Tale yes indeed now it's time to take us out of this hour we have a request from the Hawk in London he'd like to listen to uh, the Slovenian entry that uh, we heard in uh, 2012. Aha, who was that? Slovenia. Hello, this is uh, Eva from Slovenia. You are listening to Radio International with JP, and this is my song, Veriamem. Enjoy. Unfortunately, she only reached number 17 in the second semi final, but a great song for you, The Hawk in London. Enjoy, and uh, after the break on top of the hour, we'll welcome Eurovision winner Emily De Forest to our show. Sklombi Let's 
Radio International, the ultimate Eurovision experience. Radio International. Hello, this is Elitsa Todorova and Stojan Yankulov from Bulgaria. You are listening to Radio International with JP and this is our song Samu Šampioni. from Cyprus. You're listening to Radio International with JP and this is my song Anmati Masa. Enjoy! Anmati Masa This is Emily de Forest. I'm from Denmark, and you are listening to Radio International with JP. And this is my song, Only Tell Us. Enjoy. Now, welcome back to the second hour this week on Radio International, the ultimate Eurovision experience. And we once again go on to the magical time machine we have here installed in the studio. And we take us back to the year of 2013. You just heard some of the songs and artists from uh, that particular Eurovision year, where the Eurovision Song Contest took place in Malmö, in the arena of Malmö in Sweden. 39 countries competed with Armenia returning and taking a break where Bosnia and Herzegovina, Portugal and Slovakia. Turkey decided to pull out altogether, but hope this is not forever. The shows were hosted by the ever so popular Petra Mede with Eric Sorde hosting the Green Room. And uh, Denmark won for the third time with Emily de Forest, the Eurovision Song Contest, the song Only Teardrops. And with that following in the footsteps of the Olsen brothers, who won 13 years earlier with Fly in the Wings of Love, also in Sweden, and Greta and Jorgen Ingman in 1963 with the song Dans Vies. Now we are extremely delighted and welcome to the airwaves of the show live. Right here on Radio International, the champion of the Eurovision Song Contest 2013 from Denmark, it is Emily de Forest. Hello Emily, welcome back to the show. Hi, thank you so much. <laughs> I, I, I've been... Uh, giving quite a lot of information now and uh, but first let's also say hello to Salman in uh, Switzerland who's joining us for the interview Hi JP nice to be part of it, the interview Okay and John in London Hi, hi everybody out there on the radio land hi JP hi Salman and welcome Emily Thank you. Super Hi. duper. Now, Emily, uh, be, before we go deeper into the interview, we have about 54 minutes uh, to, to chat with you. Of course, you're also going to play some of the songs uh, uh, that you have released after the Eurovision victory. Um, let's uh, take you back to 2013. We have the live clip from the Eurovision Song Contest when you actually won the contest. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's get some goosebumps <laughs> now. The sky is red tonight We're on the edge tonight No shooting star to guide us I for an eye Why tear each other apart? Please tell me why Why do we make it so hard? Look at us now We only got ourselves to blame It's such a shame Oh, 
So come and face me now You're on the stage tonight Let's leave the past behind us I for an eye Why tear each other apart? Please tell me why Why do we make it so hard? But God, it's now We only got ourselves to blame It's such a shame I tell me Now, what are the goosebump moments for you now um, when you're listening to this, Emily? So, was that from Malmö or from Malmö? Dance that was Malmö, Malmö, the Eurovision, yeah. From the final? Yes. That was I the. I mean, I think I did pretty okay, didn't I? <laughs> actually, very, very good. Very, very good, actually. Yes. It's been a while since I heard it. So, um, I had kind of forgotten how it sounded, but. Wow. <laughs> it was fun to hear again. Yeah, but but do you get any any goosebumps when you're listening back to it and thinking of the moments you've been on stage? I mean, yeah, the moment. I mean, not when listening to it. I don't think I ever get goosebumps when I listen to my own stuff. <laughs> well, maybe if I just wrote something new and I'm really excited when I listen to to it to the first couple of times. But mm. you know, when it's your own music, it's always a bit weird. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely when I think about the experience. Mm -hmm. From what I remember, I mean, usually I have a really great memory uh, and I remember everything. I was pretty much two years old, but uh, some things in life, you know, like winning the Eurovision, it was so crazy. So there are some moments that are a bit blurry to me. Mm. Uh, but, but, from that uh, night yeah but, I, I, I remember I was in the in the arena on the on the floor and uh, uh, just when yeah. when all this confetti came up over you and, and that, that was just a, a picture that is something that really gives me goosebumps still while, while watching it back on, on YouTube and it, it's just yeah. an amazing feeling and you've been un showered with this confetti <laughs> in, the, in the arena <laughs> <laughs> God I don't even remember that but I've, I've seen some pictures mm. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, we, we have also a chat room uh, connected to our show and uh, people are listening to the show via the chat room live now and we're being oh. broadcast into the United Kingdom uh, on uh, Castle Point in uh, the UK. And uh, uh, that's uh, a, a lady from uh, a young young lady from Turin in Italy, not from Turin, from Milano. It's Fran Francesca Sandabrodio from uh, Milano. She's going to, to Turin next year, she says. And uh, uh, but uh, she says, in my opinion, this is the best winning song of the decade 2010 to 2019. Uh, we we, that was yours. Uh, only teardrops. Um, Uh, for you, which which was the best winner of that decade? Can you recall them? Uh, for me, yeah, for, um, from from the from that decade when you won. Oh God! Uh, first of all, it was very sweet of this lady to say this because there's been a lot of a lot of great winners. Um, we, we can help so from you. From 2010, I guess that's Lena, right? Yeah, that's Lena. Yeah, is. Uh, am I saying it right? Nikki and L. I mean, Azerbaijan. Alaniki, yeah. yes, Alaniki. Yeah. Lorene. 
and then me yeah <laughs> and then conchita yeah. and then mons and then jamala right yeah and then Perfect. salvador yeah mm -hmm. sobral and then uh uh in, in and then netta 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 yeah right correct correct and correct. then uh duncan yeah That's it. In 2020, we did not have a winner. It would no. have been Iceland, I think. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. And uh, Italy. Yes, uh, th this is the last so, uh, the last uh, uh, decade. And but wh which yeah. of those songs you, ju uh, you just mentioned in this last decade? What was for you the best winner besides of your own song? Oof. There are so many good ones. I mean, I I loved Lena's song when she won. Um, I think Loreen. Uh, is an amazing artist, a singer, and I think she has had one of the best Eurovision songs ever, not just in, in this decade. Um, and mm. um, I think everyone pretty much agrees <laughs> with that. <laughs> um, but there's been so many. I mean, I loved Salvador's song as well uh, from Portugal. And I think Italy this year, It's. Uh, I think it's so fantastic what they have brought to the competition. Um, it's, it's amazing to see how mm. well Uh, they're doing so yeah that's some of my faves wow um now when you go back to 2013 what are your fondest memories from from that eurovision week or these two weeks that you spend in malmo and do you have yeah, any, any funny stories you can share with us <laughs> um let me think i mean there's a lot of great memories i'm just trying to remember now <laughs> like i said it's all a bit blurry but it's true we went there a couple of weeks before because you have all uh the rehearsals and the sound checks and um and i remember it was maybe you guys remember that too um but um because you were there jp but it was mm -hmm. so hard for me in the beginning with the cameras and and it, it was a, it felt like a bigger stage than the one in denmark and It felt like a lot more cameras. It probably wasn't <laughs> uh, compared to, but it felt like I had to do a lot more. And But it was only, I think, at the first um, rehearsal or two that I got really nervous. And I was like, oh, you know, it didn't go that well. But then after that, I figured it out. Um, but yeah, it was probably just a bit of nerves. And um, I tried not to read too much, but I heard about the whole thing about being, you know, a favorite and you don't want to disappoint. And, um, yeah, I, I try not to pay too much attention to it, but I know that Denmark's radio did. Apparently they were like already <laughs> preparing <laughs> to host it for next year. And I didn't know anything about that. They didn't tell me, but, um, yeah, I try not to read anything or look at the news. Um, I don't know, fun stories. I mean, we did, uh, A few meet and greets where I got to meet some of the other contestants. Um, uh, it was, uh, oh boy, I, I'm usually so good with names. Ryan, right, from Ireland? Ryan Dolan, yes. Yeah, yeah Ryan, Ryan. He's a really nice guy. And Slata from Ukraine mm -hmm. and Robin from Sweden. And, oh boy, I don't remember her name, but the girl from Russia. <laughs> Uh, Dina Garipova. Yes, exactly. That was a good time um, as well. What if? Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, I mean, that was fun. But to be honest, I was a bit boring. There's a couple of weeks I didn't go out and, and party. And I, I think uh, that was a good decision because... Um, It paid back. You I won just, the contest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanted my voice to actually function on the night. And with mm. nerves and everything, you want to make sure you get your, your sleep. So I basically went back to the hotel room every night and got my at least eight hours and did not go out a, a partying like the rest of mm. the delegation. So, uh, and when I won, I I mean, I went back to my hotel. Well, not directly because, you know, there was interviews in the press conference and you always go to party afterwards at the Euro Club and sing your song mm. and talk some press again. But then I went home because I knew the next day, you know, we'd have to go back to Denmark and there would be more press conferences and <laughs> celebration in Tivoli. So it was like... I just need to get my sleep and yeah, so it was a bit boring, I guess. <laughs> wow, but it's not so far away from Malmö to, to Copenhagen, right? It's just across no. the Amazon. <laughs> That was kind of a home run for you then. Yeah, exactly. And it was really fun to win in Sweden since I'm half Swedish as well. So it felt huh? like I was 
at home. Wow, wow, so mm. fantastic. Now, um, mm. now there is before we swing into John, one more question coming from the chat, and uh, uh, it says here you tried almost everything related to Eurovision: competing, you won the contest, performing as an interval act, writing songs for other artists. Uh, that is Lucy Jones in the UK. Uh, you mm. only miss hosting the contest. Yeah. W would you do that? <laughs> I think I'm too scared. I don't know if I can. Do you guys think I could do that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you will I be like just, yeah. <laughs> definitely because It's, everybody will be trained and and uh, the, the, there's coaching going on. Uh, for, like uh, Elda from Azerbaijan, he he wasn't the host mm -hmm. either. He was trained in actually in Germany how to oh. host Eurovision 2012 in Baku. So, right, that's right. I just. Um, I think I would get really nervous. I mean, not that I, I mean, I can get nervous too when I have to sing in front of a large audience or like a huge TV show like Eurovision. But I feel like it's before you step on stage and, and then when you begin, it kind of goes away. But, um, uh, and it's funny, I, I don't know, because I, I know a lot of people, they think the most scary thing in the world is to sing, but you know, I'm used to that. So I don't have the nerves in the same way mm -hmm. when I sing. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when I have to speak in front of people, like doing a speech or something, I mean, I can do it. And, you know, I've spoken to an audience, you know, many times between my numbers when I go on tour. Mm -hmm. But I always find that more nerve wracking than actually singing. So, I mean, imagining just hosting a big show like that and 200 million people is watching and you just don't want to screw it up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I am. Um, well. Oh. Maybe I have to think about it. It sounds yeah. scary, but interesting. Yeah, it, well. it's uh, it, it's something, and uh, and I think well, if you if you were uh, uh, in Sweden, you would have to fight with Petra Mede to get that role of being a host. She will never give oh, that boy. up. <laughs> no, I would I would not dare to fight with her. Oh my god, I'm such a, no. I mean, she's amazing. She's probably. I mean, when she hosted it, that that was in 2013. I mean, she was amazing. She's so funny. Mm. I mean, I would not want to. Take. Compete with her yeah. and totally amateur. <laughs> well, you, you would do it in your style, of course. It's, it's it's in your in your Emily style, the way you would with your charm, Danish charm you have, and I think you, you would you would do a, go, a good host in in your way. I, I don't know. I think it would be kind of a goofy show. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll be on DR for, for the next time. Then Mark wins that Emily is going to host. That's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> but but what can actually top for you for your career? To to uh, you, you won the contest. So what what could be higher than that for you? Oh, honestly, I don't know. I mean, I have to say, like, Luis Capaldi, I mean, it's downhill from then on. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's like, how can you top that? I mean, and also because I was so young. I was like, uh, yeah, 19 when I won the Danish selection and 20 when I won Eurovision. And there has been other who were that young. I mean, Lena was quite young and mm. Celine Dion and... Um, But there's also been a lot of winners who, you know, you know were maybe like 28, 30, mm. 32 or whatever. And it makes a huge difference. I mean, now I, I turned 28 this year and I, I'm, of course, I'm still the same person. But you feel kind of like a different person. I mean, those eight years, I mean, makes a huge difference. Mm. And, and I think uh, it, it was hard because it was my debut. And, you know, other artists who's won the competition, they've maybe competed, you know, before. Uh, a couple of times in the competition or had a career before that. Maybe they've been TV hosts or competed in other talent shows um, and had a career before. But for me, I mean, that was like my debut and I never performed on TV before. And and then you win this huge thing and you're like number one in 15 countries. And it's like, how are you going <laughs> to mm -hmm. follow up on that? I mean, it's, um, but I mean, it's been great mainly, but I think it's, um, it's funny because people call it like, oh, it's like the Eurovision curse or like the melody uh, company for bands as we say in danish but i feel like it's not just you know your vision it's when you get exposure like that in such a short amount of time and it's like it's huge and you're everywhere on tv and every newspaper and magazine you know it's um it's really hard to follow that success up and i think you can see it even with actors as well you know with mm. friends i mean Of course, it's Jennifer Aniston, but when you think about it, it was like the biggest show and the biggest actors for like 10 years. And it's been so hard for them, you know, afterwards. I mean, no comparison, but I, I, I think you've, you've seen that mm. quite a lot with 
yeah, like with friends and even Game of Thrones. I mean, I mean uh, Jon Snow. I mean, it's when you when you're when people kind of see you in a certain role. And for me, it was not just a song that was a hit on the radio. It was a whole performance and a whole look, you know. And then it's yeah, that's how people see you and mm. view you, even though it's been like eight years. Mm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Emily. That was quite a good good answer on on that one. Uh, now I'm, oh, I'm giving well, giving my <laughs> I'm giving my my role over to to John next in London to ask questions. Thank you mm. very much, JP. Um, okay, Emily. Um, uh, regarding 2013 again, you mentioned many names of the artists who whose songs you liked and everything. Um, are you still yeah. in contact with uh, with any of these guys? Perhaps the ones who you've mentioned, or anybody else? Oh, um, you mean from uh, former um, winners? Um, in fact, no, you're and pe people from, let's just say, as, as we say here, from the class of 2013. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, let's see. Um, I think Ryan and I still follow each other on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan from Ireland. Um, he's, uh, yeah, he was such a sweet guy. I, I, I don't think... I'm in contact with um, any of the other guys. I'm trying to think. I think it's been more, you know, some of the former Eurovision winners because there's always, you know, these parties or concerts or gigs or whatever where we're all there, or at least some of us are. <laughs> and and then, you know, we meet up and it's it's really fun. I mean, I've done gigs with everyone from, of course, the Olsen brothers, but uh johnny logan a few times and brotherhood of man i mean they're like the sweetest people mm. and um Lorena, of course and um conchita uh who else yeah bobby socks <laughs> yeah, the lovely ladies from from sweden and yeah, and, and norway definitely <laughs> um I mean, there's more. I just don't remember right now. But but you know, we often <laughs> run into each other at gigs like that. Well, it's great. As uh, as 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 we'll probably mention a little bit later on. You know, once once you're a Eurovisiony, then or, then then always a Eurovisiony. You know, there's always a place in in the Eurovision family for. Yeah, for exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pass this one over to uh, Salman in Switzerland. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, John. So, uh, Emily, we just spoke about it, that in 2013, you just won one year after the big hit, uh, victory of Loreen, who had yeah. a world hit with Euphoria. So, yeah. how did it feel having to fill her footprints? Did you feel any kind of pressure? Um, I think, again, I try not to like pay too much attention to what people said or wrote. Um, but, I mean, it was a fantastic song and, and, you know, it was a big hit in all of Europe and... I remember I was in Spain that summer and it was everywhere and most people didn't even know that it was, you know, the winning song of Eurovision that year. It, it was so huge. And um, but it was such a beautiful performance. Her voice is amazing. The song is amazing. And I, of course, I've always loved uh, watching the Eurovision as a kid. But um, when I was asked to compete, I think it was definitely also because of her performance. I was like, wow, I mean. I mean, look what Eurovision can do now. It's like it's just getting bigger and bigger, and it, it really opens the door to so many things career-wise and to a platform in all of Europe and for you to travel and make a living from your music. So uh, I think it actually has something to do with that, that I actually said yes. I mean, of, of course I would have said yes anyway. It was something I <laughs> wanted to do for a long time, but it really it helped. I mean, it was um, an amazing performance. But, um, but yeah, of course, sometimes we w would be like compared, but I think it was mostly, I mean, the bare feed because, I mean, the songs are like nothing alike. They're very uh, different. Um, but um, and we even talked about it, oh, like the bare feed thing. Is that going to be a problem? Because I'd always been singing without shoes ever since I was <laughs> a teenager because I really had nerves. You know, I started singing when I was a small kid and I, I loved it, but I was so nervous. Everyone could see me shake even from way back, uh, you know, in the audience. So I knew if I would wear heels. I, I would look and feel even more nervous. So ever since I was a teenager, I started singing without shoes um, as often as possible. So it wasn't something I invented for your vision. And we were like, oh, she did that, <laughs> you know, the year before. What are we going to do? But, but well, so many singers did that outside of your vision, you know, like Janis Joplin and I, I think Björk even for some performances. So we were like, we, we, we're just going to do it. And it worked out. 
So. Yeah. And an, an, another important element of your winning performance was also your interaction on stage with the flute player. I think Jacob <laughs> was his name. So oh, yeah, he was a fan favorite. With him? And do you know what he's doing nowadays or um, did you meet him? Uh, I mean, we're we're definitely Facebook Insta friends, but I haven't seen him in a while because um, I know he's not playing much with Copenhagen drummers anymore because he's so busy. He has his own business, like a gym, um, and he's a personal trainer, and he has a lot of kids now, and so he's super busy. But Copenhagen uh -huh. drummers is very successful in Denmark, and they're uh, touring a lot. Um, so I'm in contact with those guys. Uh, they wanted me to come for a gig. Uh, that was before the pandemic, but then we couldn't work it out. I think I had another gig. Um, but um, I saw them, I think this was it this spring or summer when things had started to open up again, um, where I was like, I, I did a little surprise concert mm -hmm. for one of the guys who had, um, well, it wasn't his wedding. I don't know what you call that in English, but you know, when you've been married for like 12 or 14 years or whatever. Okay. <laughs> the, the anniversary. <laughs> yeah, an anniversary. So I was like the surprise and um, and I, I got to see all the guys from Copenhagen drummers minus Jacob actually so mm. <laughs> yeah I haven't seen him in a while unfortunately <laughs> all right so for the next question back to London to John thank you so much Salman okay um, shortly after your victory Emily you moved here to uh, London town um, how would you describe life here compared to living in Denmark um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> well actually I didn't um, I didn't live there like constantly I still have my apartment in in Copenhagen, but I loved London so much. So I went there all the time, back and forth. I still love London, by the way, but it's been hard. hard. <laughs> I, I really do, but it's been hard to, uh, to go because of uh, the pandemic, you know, the travel restrictions. So, um, God, I think the last time I went was in uh, November. November, I think October, 2019. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> it wasn't possible to go back, you know, all of 2020. And I don't know when you guys opened up. Was it in July this year? Yeah, yeah, it was July this year. We've been pretty much open ever since. So the invitation yeah. is always there. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I was supposed to go November, but I, I'm not sure. I can, I'm going to Stockholm, so I don't know if I can make it. But December, I'm thinking about going uh, to London uh, for a couple of days. But um, but I, I went there quite a lot. I had a lot of friends there, um, still have. Some of them have moved uh, to other cities in Europe. But um, but um, and I took some acting classes there and had a lot of uh, writing sessions and meetings and stuff. And um, um, it's just such an interesting city. I mean, I'm such a museums, what do you call it, geek. I love to go to museums and it's open and free everywhere in London. It's not anymore in Denmark. I mean, you have to pay <laughs> every museum. But in London, you can just go to any museum and just spend a whole day and um, and just... Uh, there are so many cool shops and historical monuments. And, and I think also the language and, like, the humor that I feel like Danes and British people have in common. I think we're not that far from one another. And because um, it's not that I don't love... Rome or Paris or whatever. I've spent a lot of time in Paris, but it's I, I feel like the humor and and the language um, and the people in London. Um, it's I just I really love that. <laughs> uh, as as a Londoner, that's that's wonderful to hear. I'm very I'm, I'm very proud when other, when other people um, <laughs> raise my city up because it's our job as Londoners to put it down. So thank you, <laughs> <laughs> JP. You've got the next one before I before I talk more about London, JP. Please. Yeah. Well, it's a nice town. It's a nice place to be as well. I, I always enjoy to to visit London when I go over to UK and and uh, I spend lots and lots of of days in in London in the eighties. So, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. here comes a question from Flamingo. I don't know where where Flamingo is from. It's from the chat room. Cyprus, JP. From Cyprus, even. Wow. Uh, his question to you is, Emily, would you accept to go out for dinner with one of your fans? <laughs> Uh, that depends. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough question. It's a tough question. <laughs> I mean, yeah. What kind of a dinner? <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, I... <laughs> it's like, if it's just like, you know, a dinner. Yeah. Then just, maybe. Just, but uh, yeah. if it's like a date... Now, it didn't Sorry, say dinner date. Yeah. No, no, of course. <laughs> I'm practically married. Well, I'm not, but I mean, <laughs> we're going to marry, I mean, soon. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to do well, that, actually, in Las Vegas, but, you know, then 
pandemic happened. So yeah. <laughs> Wow, well, that, that that's some some good news you gave us there. So congratulations! Yeah, on, I want on to be Vegas. married by Elvis. That's like Ooh, our plan. By Elvis, <laughs> oh yeah, that's going to be a bit Vegas. difficult. <laughs> okay. Now, w with winning the Eurovision Song Contest, do you feel that there are only advantages when winning Eurovision at a young age, or do you also see it uh, see it as any disadvantage being young to win? Uh, and what would you advise other young artists who want to enter the contest? Uh, is there anything that you would do differently these days? Uh, definitely, because I'm older. Um, I think, but I think that's also, uh, I don't know, it's so hard like when it's your own performance, but I, I feel like people, you know, it was just very, um, I don't know if you can say real in a sense, but I, I didn't think too much about it. I was just like thrown into it all. So I just kind of did my thing. And um, I didn't really have that training, I guess, mm. on TV. Of course, I got some press training before going to Malmo. But um, I think now when I'm on stage, I, I actually know what I'm doing. And I'm more experienced when I do interviews or whatever. But back then, I was just, I think I was being as close you know being myself as i could of course it's a special situation and the press is there and stuff like that but i i think people felt it was very honest and and real and i think you can only do that when when, when you're so young and mm. inexperienced i mean i i could never do that in the exact same way now that i have the experience if you know what i mean mm -hmm. um it would be a different performance and and i'm uh I mean, as I said, I'm the same person, but I'm I'm a different artist and singer in a way now, because uh, in a good way, I think I think things um, you're getting experience. A lot yeah, 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 and things become a lot easier with age. So it is true. It is it is easier getting older because um, I, I loved so many things about it when I when I competed, but I was also um, you know really stressed out sometimes. And I think when you're younger, it's um, harder for you to maybe handle mm. stressful situations like that and uh and also i've been through some rough years just before the competition and things i hadn't worked through with my dad who passed away all of a sudden uh, and moving to mm. a big city alone and um just in general actually a lot of i feel like you know grief and childhood traumas and things i hadn't worked out and then all of a sudden you're like thrown into a situation like that and i think now at 28 it would have been easier for me to handle and and Mm -hmm. um, I think you can see that from some of the winners I mentioned who were older than me when they won, who were maybe 28 or 30 or older than that. There's another, I feel like, confidence and security when I see their performances. And I'm not sure I had that, but I think I had something else that, that people liked, <laughs> apparently. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it worked out. Um, but a lot of, I, I would do a lot of things different uh, now because of uh, the experience and... And regarding the question whether it's like an advantage or not, I, I winning the competition, I think it's mainly positive, as I said um, earlier on. But, you know, it always opens some doors and it closes other doors. And I think it is like that with everything you choose in life. And, um, and I think maybe we talked about that in Stuttgart, but, you know, that um, if you want to, if you want to, you know, make a living out of music and travel the world and write and release music and, and do all these things and your vision is so great um and it's been almost like a school of learning how it mm -hmm. all, it all works and how the music business works i've learned so much um but sometimes if you want to cross over to mainstream radio that can be harder i mean i've done that with a lot of singles but um sometimes people can be skeptical because i, I guess it depends also what country you're from if your vision has like a stamp or whatever you call it um Like in Sweden, it's I think they have another relationship to it than in Denmark and mm. and a different one in in Russia and you know Germany and the UK. It's different everywhere. Indeed, yeah. Thanks, mm -hmm. Emily. Now, uh, shall we shall we take a musical break? One song uh, from from your, your collection, so you can uh, uh, calm your voice a bit, a little bit, and have a have a, a drink. And uh, um, yeah. Now I, I've lined up either a, a rabbit, typical love song. Or Rainmaker or Sanctuary. This is what, what we have on, on uh, the player now. You can pick which mm. one. Well, then maybe should we pick my new single? Yeah. 
Which which one is it? Is it uh, the the? That uh, is a typical love song. Typical love song. That's the one. Okay, here we go. Let's have a listen to this one. Beautiful piece of music there by Emily DeForest, the new song. Wow, this is nice. Typical love song, it's called. And uh, is that coming from an album you, you got, you're releasing soon? Uh, yeah, I'm planning that. So uh, this was actually supposed to come a lot earlier this year. Like it, it has like this summer vibe, as you can maybe hear. But due to like COVID and it was so hard to get through to people you know i work with a lot of people abroad and everything was just delayed mm. so yeah it came out october 8th um wow so yeah i'm working on i have so many songs i've written during lockdown but um but yeah next uh, a new single um next year a uh, couple singles and and um, an ep that's like we're looking forward to this super that's nice there is yeah. a question coming in from i think it's bulgaria ivan dobrev from the Bulgaria. name and uh, he would like to thank you for making me fall in love with eurovision because of your performance at the contest and the question <laughs> he has what are you doing during the, uh, uh what were you doing uh during the pandemic except the new making new music oh well except making new music yeah. uh I watched a lot of Netflix, I think, like everyone else. Um, I, I did that mostly for the first maybe like two months because I think when the pandemic happened, we were all like in shock and didn't know how to cope and it was hard to like get a routine and yeah, to find a routine and, and work from home. So I think I got caught in the Netflix trap and mm. watched a lot of shows and films, uh, also read a few books. And then I was like, no, I need to get my 
shit together. Okay. So, <laughs> and then um, and then music we, came uh, up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, did a lot of writing. I mean, on Zoom, and mm. it worked. And I was skeptical in the beginning because it's uh, it is harder when you're not in the room together and you can't bounce back and forth. But mm. figured out that if you have a track or an idea or something before you start, it makes it a lot easier. So um, did a lot of Zoom sessions and nice. writing nice. in the living room. Wow, nice. <laughs> And watching stuff. <laughs> okay, Simon, over to you. Yeah, so we were speaking about what could be the next step after Eurovision. Some of the Eurovision winners have uh, entered Melodie Festival and afterwards, even after her, their victory, like for example Charlotte Pirelli or Helena Paparizio or even Doreen. Would it be yes. for you an option to compete in Melodie Festival in one day, maybe as singer or as songwriter? <laughs> I mean, as a songwriter, definitely. It's just, um, it's kind of hard because <laughs> there is uh, so many good songs in Melody Festival. And, um, so there's a lot of competition to get your song in there, even as a writer. Um, I wrote some songs on a camp this fall and um, this summer in um, Saint Domaine. And I know some, one of the songs um, they really liked, particularly one, uh, and they've been testing it with a singer, but. Um, But yeah, I uh, I don't know if it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but as a songwriter, definitely, I'd love that. And um, I think I said before, like I can't see myself compete again because it's so hard to top that. Because when you win everything in the first try, I, I mean, it would be so difficult to compete again unless mm -hmm. you're someone like Johnny Logan. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, and I'm a bad loser, so I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I, I don't think it's ever going to happen. But if 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 I had to ever compete, I mean. The Melody Festival is um, it's definitely it's it's something else. I mean, it's just so huge in Sweden. I know that, cause, yeah. Like my family and my dad. I mean, I'm half Swedish, and everyone watches it. And and it's um, even if you don't win it, I mean, it's it's such a, an exciting thing to do. And and to, you know, to get your song on the radio, and it's it's um, it's such a great great show. And yeah, they're really they're really good at it <laughs> in Sweden. So uh, uh, my answer would be no. But if I ever had to compete, I mean. Sweden yeah. wouldn't be the worst <laughs> place. But then there's hope to see you as a songwriter. So yeah, we would be happy about this. And I think uh, this would be also a great next step. <laughs> yeah. So next question from John. Thank you, Salman. Okay, let's go back uh, right to the beginning, Emily. So your singing career started very young at the age of nine, I believe. Um, what made you decide to um, choose singing as, uh, as, as your career? And who were your idols growing up? Oh, I had so many. I think, I think I already said when I was like three or four that I wanted to be a singer, and then, but I, you know, you're not maybe that serious <laughs> when you're four years old. But yeah, but I, it was always something I really wanted to do, and I, I was always that annoying kid who was like singing at birthdays and parties and had to you know, stand up on a chair and start started to sing. So, yeah. Um, but uh, then I went to school where we had a lot of music and acting and we were constantly dragged on stage to do some performance and I had some really good music teachers and I think that really affected me in a positive way and really saw my talent and helped me like nurture that and my mom and, and my dad as well my, my parents were so supportive and um, so when I started touring when I was like 14 and weekends when I wasn't um, in school my mom would drive me and be the chauffeur and, and roadie because I didn't, you know, I didn't have a driver's license. Um, <laughs> so she would drive me and, um, and yeah, I would sit after school and book all these gigs and call people. And again, they thought it was really annoying because I, you know, when you're 14, you're like absolutely crazy. I mean, I, I don't know what was wrong with me, but I think when you're a teenager, at least when I was a teenager, I just didn't have any fear. I was like, so brave, actually. <laughs> I feel like I was more braver than I am now. I just, I would, uh, I would call everyone and I wouldn't stop until I got an answer. And they were like, sometimes, oh, you know, we know you think this is exciting, but you can't keep calling us. <laughs> and I was like, but I really want to know if I can get this gig for this festival. And they're like, okay, like you can get it. So <laughs> I, was, I was that kid, but I, I made like a lot of gigs because of that. because I was really, I wouldn't say pushy, but you know, you just have that fire. I think when you're young, when you're young, I mean, I'm 28, so I'm still young is, you know, when you're, <laughs> when you're like, when you're a kid and when you're a teenager, um, But um, but yeah, it was just always um, something I wanted to do, and I think some people maybe thought, "Oh, she's gonna, you know, grow out of that idea, and maybe she's gonna get a real job." But it didn't happen. <laughs> my mom never never thought that. Or my dad—they were always so supportive. So that's really nice because I know a lot of 
artists who weren't that fortunate where their parents was really against it and that was not the case uh for me like they were always supportive so speaking about uh speaking about your parents um mm-hmm. early on we hear that you you also sang with your mum in the steve cameron gospel choir for several years yeah. um yeah. how did this happen and uh, did you have any big gigs that you remember mm-hmm. Yeah, well, um I think my mom went there first with some of her friends and, and uh I thought it sounded fun. I was like, "Hey, I want to go too." And uh and um yeah, then we went every Monday. I think I went for was it for three years. Um but yeah, we we definitely did some gigs, like some um summer festivals outside and uh some church concerts and and again, I was I, I was so excited and I Well, he asked me also if I wanted to do um a couple of solos and I was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> I really want to do that so um um yeah I got to uh to actually do a lot of performances with uh, with that choir and and then then afterwards then you know I started playing with Fraser I, I did both at the same time but then um then as I mentioned before we we got a lot of gigs all of a sudden and and that kind of took over um the the duo that I had with with Fraser Neil but um but it was fun to sing gospel as well Mm, nice. fantastic okay mm. well um yeah you, you half on to the next one we had as well so basically um what did you <laughs> learn from uh, from working with uh with 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 Fraser and um how did and how did the experience of working with uh, with him prepare you for your later career I think uh I got a lot of experience in like preparation when it comes to like playing live gigs because it's like the old school tough way it's like little concert places and the pops um there was like this Irish uh, pop way up in Newland where I live like this small tiny town near the water and but it was like super popular on weekends and and people came also from Scotland and Ireland even um to uh to listen to music and they had like an Irish festival or whatever but uh but some of those places some of those gigs i mean people sometimes go and they haven't necessarily paid to hear you play so you have to really fight for their attention for them to hear and and uh i think in denmark in general i mean we can be you know sometimes really bad at you know we we talk a lot <laughs> during a concert and like yell and ah, and i don't know what it's like in in the uk because i i know fraser was a bit like hey i feel like in scotland people like listen more i i've never been to scotland i really want to go but but there was a lot of you know you really had to fight in a way for that uh attention and for them to, to you know get moved by by what you were singing and so that was actually a really great experience and and um i think i learned a lot <laughs> playing those uh rock and roll gigs Fantastic. Okay, I'm going to pass this next one over to JP in the Netherlands. Thanks very much. And actually, it's a, it's a question from the chat room from a long distant listener in Venezuela. It's Rafael Vivas, and over there they speak Spanish. And he wanted to know if you actually sing also in Spanish, or are there any plans? Um, I don't, but I love Spanish. I mean, it's uh, I think it's so beautiful. Um, I think. Uh, uh spanish and portuguese and italian and french are like amazing languages to sing in um mm-hmm. i think it's something i mentioned with the wibi box interview i did recently where i said the danish wasn't as pretty and i got in kind of trouble <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But like, come on it isn't it isn't it is prettier and i mean i can say that i'm half danish half swedish and, and yeah I, I, spanish is really one of the great languages to sing in it's so expressive and mm. um i don't speak spanish but i think maybe at school or something we try to sing a spanish song and i i don't think the pr- pronunciation is well it's that hard actually mm. but but i mean one thing is singing a song if you have to speak it and learn the grammar i mean that's really difficult but i, w- I would love to sing a song in spanish one ah, day. there is a future for, uh, <laughs> something maybe only teardrops in spanish that would be something to to, to, uh, yeah, to a try out <laughs> <laughs> over to salman yes emily so your vision has changed a lot since 2013 uh, what has. changes do you like and uh, what things do you think should have stayed the same way as it was changes you mean um 
when it comes to like the rules or like voting or yeah like visuals, the rules I mean. the the voting has changed but also like for example um uh, the singing on the stage like also the recording um vocals of of the background uh, singers so this kind of things yeah yeah i remember that because we um when i was competing i don't think you could have back you, you couldn't have any choir on track i mean you had to have real yes. live mm-hmm. backing had singers live, I, yeah uh-huh. i had yeah. three really amazing backing singers with me and then the music is of course uh on track um but now i guess you can have backing you know choir on track right yeah yeah mm-hmm. um i mean in, for some songs and some productions i mean it, it makes things easier um i really love the thing about having backing singers and that all everything that was like vocals you know it had to be live i really like that but when it comes to some songs i mean if i'd ever competed with rainmaker that would have been kind of hard to do without you mm-hmm. know choir and backing on track um but yeah um i don't know about that one um mm-hmm. but i can definitely i can definitely see some big changes i mean also like the screens and like i mean the visuals everything it's like looks incredible <laughs> um not to say it didn't back in 2013 it was just a different time and the screens and everything was nice but you know it was more you know basic and now it's like it's it's incredible i think the first time i had that like wow uh experience was probably in 2015 like two years after when i think austria hosted it yeah and the floors and like the screens it was like what this is only two years after what happened like it's like technology <laughs> just like exploded and developed so much in these two years and and so i mean it looked amazing and also months performance that year i mean it's um i think that's when it really changed two years after and um yeah yeah i like it <laughs> what can i say i mean it, it looks great <laughs> great <laughs> So next question uh, from John in London. Okay, and uh, I'm going to give one out from the chat room this time. This is from another far distant listener from uh, from Angola and from a guy called um, David. And he says, um, have you ever thought of visiting any country in Africa uh, to perform? Do you know if your music has reached as far as his home country of Angola by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it has or... Do you know if it has? I wouldn't be surprised. But have you got any funny things like from someone from think, from Africa being like, "Yeah, I love your stuff." Mm-hmm. I think actually, because my brother's um, uh, ex girlfriend, um, she uh, grew up in Kenya and mm-hmm. went back uh, uh, back and forth. And um, I think she said when she was there, her brother mentioned it as well that some of them had heard Rainmaker on the radio and out on the cafe. Mm. Uh, and that was in Kenya. Um, and, um, but yeah, I ha- I've never been to any African country, unfortunately. Uh, really, I'd love to go. And um, I have a friend who's, uh, who's uh, from Uganda who goes there quite often. And I think that could be exciting. I mean, there's so many exciting places I'd love to visit. I mean, everywhere, but definitely in Africa as well. Wow. Well, Rainmaker mm. is really fitting for, for this, uh, this, uh, this question, actually. We're going to play out with it, I think. But uh, we have four minutes left, and maybe, Salman, one more question? Yeah. Um, yes, so um, regarding like, uh, your future plans, um, do you want to be also connected in some way to Eurovision? I mean, we heard that uh, um, about the options like uh, songwriter or also like uh, on the stage, but could you also imagine to just go there in public, uh, sit sit down, uh, sit back and relax and watch the show? Uh, I think so. Yes, I mean, I, I watch it. I've watched it from um, my living room a few times. Um, I haven't just been there, you know, to sit there um, in the audience. Um, and I guess it's kind of hard to get tickets as well, right? I mean, it's there's always, you know, only a few tickets. Um, I'm sure the executive <laughs> uh, supervisor will find some uh, possibility to do really? for you. They never <laughs> ask. They never, I mean, of course, if you have to go there and perform, and I've done that also from some different countries, you know, national selections, but but usually it's only if, you, if you're if you going there to perform. I mean, it's, it's 
<laughs> You'll have to send me an invite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be great to see you there. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm part of the Eurovision family, and that's the good thing that uh, we all yeah. love Eurovision. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And oh my God, it's going to be in Italy next year. I mean, I would love to go. I mean, love wow. Italy. I mean, it's. God, yeah. <laughs> and it's a lot warmer there than in Denmark or in the Netherlands, right? <laughs> Emily, yeah, thank yeah, you food, so oh, much. Got the best kitchen in the world. Yeah, the la cuisine of Bella Italia. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much for taking the time for an hour to chat with us on, on live on the of show. Course. And uh, we course. wish you all the best of luck for your future upcoming uh, musical projects. And of course, with your Thank career you. and in the family, of course, making, making a family <laughs> soon. So, uh, yeah, congratulations and uh, looking forward to hear more music from you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, thank you, John and Salman, for the interview, as well as to the chat room for sending in the questions. And uh, we had a lot more questions, but you know, one hour is one hour. We can't have more at the moment. <laughs> Emily, take care and have a good, good, uh, good time, and stay healthy. Thank you. You too. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Join us when the sun is high. It only takes one love to open up the sky. Mountains higher, when will you find us higher? Over the mountains higher, when will you find us? Oh, I hear. The ultimate Eurovision experience. Hi, my name is Emma from Italy. You are listening to Radio International with JP, and this is my song La Mia Città. Enjoy. This is Dingara Kovac from Slovenia. You are listening to Radio International with JP and this is my song Round and Round. Enjoy! Hello, this is Susie and I'm from Portugal. You are listening to Radio International with JP and this is my song Give Sir Tua. Enjoy! the power broadcasting across the globe this is radio international this is Polly Genova from Bulgaria and this is my song if love was a crime it's radio international you and I we collide like the stars 
on a summer night We can shine forever Now Petra, now we can do it. Hi, I'm Petra Mede. And I'm Marcel Mulev. And you're listening to Radio International with JP. Thank you very much, guys. 2016 was in Poli Genova, or Genova. Was the highest placed Bulgarian entry to date. Until a young Christian Kostov took over in 2017. Bettered the Bulgarian result to number two. But Polly Genova hit number four. She was guest on our show some weeks ago. I think by now she should have her baby. If Love Was a Crime was a song at the Eurovision Song Contest in 2016. She's got a new song out. And it's called No More. And let's see Fabrizio Parisi and Editor Remix. We're going to be playing that one rather shortly. And... Uh, after that, we'll be uh, in touch with our newsman, Nathan Modell uh, from ESCX.com. And then we got uh, requests coming up, as well as the Eurovision Lordship, Marcus Keppel Palmer, who's going to give us uh, six songs that are performed at the Eurovision Song Contest in Italian, in the Italian language, but not by Italian artists. And they're not Italy's entries as well. So Eurovision Lordship Marcus with us is in this hour as well. And then in our fourth hour, David Mann comes back with uh, the Eurovision cover spot. And we have lots of Euro requests we're squeezing in in the fourth hour as well. But now let's go listen to that new song by Poli Genova. No More is on the way next. Radio International for all the fans of the Eurovision Song Contest. New. 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 Try away Love is only 
Wow, they go, that is Polly Genova and the song is No More and that's her latest offering. She released only last week, I think, last week or last month in October of 2021 and uh, have a lot of fun with your new baby, baby child she has. Now, it is time without further ado to head over to our newsroom at ESC Extras headquarters where we have Nathan Modell waiting illegal, e eagerly to come on. Now on Radio International with the very latest news from ESCExtra.com, here's Nathan Waddell. Hello Nathan, welcome back to the show. Good to have you back. Hello JC, yes, uh, I, was, I was waiting eagerly, not illegally. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was just, uh, I'll just highlight that. Uh, yes, uh, I'm doing okay, thank you. Uh, not too badly at all. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's uh, yeah, sometimes it's a it's, it's a twist of the tongue today. Uh, some some days it goes really good, and some days it's really blah, 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 <laughs> just bite it. <laughs> it's okay. You, you made me laugh quite well, so uh, so I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, but yes, I'm I'm doing okay, thank you. Um, a little bit of a cold, JP, but I think we all do at the minute. Of course, uh, after spending most of the last year not seeing other people or not mm. kind of being in contact with so many, it's. Uh, quite a, a strong cold season isn't it yeah it is and and uh, some of my my colleagues have also got a cold of course and they get get tested if it's corona or not and uh, luckily it is not so so it, it's uh so yeah it's best to to get tested in case you have any symptoms um of of, of cold flu or so and, and just to be sure that it's not corona and that you don't spread it on absolutely exactly that jp okay let's have some eurovision news shall we Yes, let's do it. So, um, we have um, the latest news out of um, the, oh, excuse me, Jeffy, out of the Junior Eurovision Song Contest, um, mm -hmm. is the tickets have gone on sale today. And um, you can purchase tickets either for the rehearsal show on Saturday, December the 18th, or the live final on Sunday, December 19th. Um, they have been released on the La Scène Musicale website today, 11 a.m. Um, uh, that's Wednesday, 3rd of November, I should say. And a range of categories and packages are available for both rehearsal and the live broadcast final. Um, so uh, the gold seats for the rehearsal are 73 euros and for the live show are 83 euros. Um, whereas you can still pick up a family pack for four tickets. Uh, your Category 1 family pack is 150 euros for four people. And the Category 1 family pack for the live show, should I say, is 180 euros, 150 for rehearsal, and 180 for the live show. So um, France uh, trying terribly to encourage families to come and have a great night at 
is your evening at the junior at Eurovision Song Contest. Fans travelling from outside of France are advised to check and consider domestic travel restrictions as well as any requirements the French government has put in place for inbound travel. Everybody attending will require a pass sanitaire and must abide by the COVID-19 protocols in place. Um, so that's just as a, as a not that anyone is going to be surprised by that, but just to confirm there that you will require um, the pass sanitaire health pass um, to get access to the event. Um, we have also um, heard uh, this week that Serbia's entry from Yovana and Dunja is called Children's Eye, written uh, and composed by Anna, uh, uh, Anna Fralin. Um, the song um, was originally titled Oci de Teta, um, but they have one for Children's Eye, the uh, English title for it. It was selected internally after seven submissions received by an expert jury. Um, so 10-year-old Yovana Radonjic and 11-year-old Dunja Zivkovic will perform Children's Eyes as their entry at this year's Junior Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, we are now only awaiting uh, contestants from Kazakhstan, Italy, Georgia, Bulgaria and Armenia. Uh, and we are still waiting for a couple more songs uh, from those who have been selected, um, such as uh, Mayu Levi Laula for Ireland and Sonia Azizova for Azerbaijan. Um, but we are very nearly... Uh, oh, uh, well, also, we're also waiting for a song from North Macedonia, but we do know about that entry. Um, but yes, um, we, we are getting very close now to having a full batch of junior Eurovision entries for 2021 in Paris. Now, looking ahead to the Eurovision Song Contest 2022, um, NDR um, have uh, been looking at their format. The programming director um, has stated the intention to simplify the selection progress going forward um and um, we we did already know from the head of delegation alexandra wolfluff uh, a week after the 2021 grand final that um they were going to be reevaluating this um so uh, programming director of ndr frank beckman says of course we want to become more competitive this thing also includes simplifying the selection process i had the feeling that last time the selection rules were too complicated we want to adapt them in a way so that it can be explained in just two sentences the Eurovision Song Contest will be seen as a project for the whole of ARD more than ever before. Um, so, of course, for the past two editions, NDR have used a dual jury system to select their entry. Um, the system is also used by Switzerland's SRG, SSR, their broadcasting um, community there. Um, the format is basically designed to simulate a cross-section of viewers' taste. And although the selection method has not been confirmed for 2022, Beckman states his intention to better leverage the broadcasters, TV, radio, and online platforms. That may may be a little bit more of a, a digital process than it has been previously. Um, so, uh, of course, um, Germany haven't had particularly good results uh, recently. But the mix, of course, they they did win the contest with uh, Up Light. Um, but they've been in the bottom service for whatever year since 2015, with only one exception where Michael Schulte finished fourth in Lisbon uh, in 2018. And of course, uh, Ben Dolich in 2020, there was a lot of promise in, in the entry violent thing, um, but of course the entry uh, never made it to the original Song Contest and he opted not to go ahead with the 2021 contest. Um, and of course we got Jendrik last year instead. Uh, Melody Gonfru will announce their acts on January the 6th. Um, we have heard from um, Irsi Noya, um, that the broadcaster has teased um, viewers uh, can expect a wide range of genres. Um, Stig Carlson, the manager of Mille de Compli, has uh, said MGP 2022 offers great variety and diversity. Um, there'll be sophisticated artisanal pearls with some songs. There'll be party songs for the dance floor, theatrical numbers, big ballads, heavy rock, opera, country, and even the most modern music relevant in 2021. In my not entirely objective eyes, it's perhaps one of the best musical editions we have had. The level of this year's vocalist is out of this world. So we've covered this a couple of times, but I will repeat. Maybe we've gone pre this year is five semi-finals for the grand final. Uh, that's generally 15, 22, 29, 5 and 12. Uh, February. And then the grand final, a week later on February the 19th. Some submission window closed on September 15th. And Yassi Noya also reported that fewer Swedish and foreign songwriters have submitted songs than in previous years. 
Um, the maximum space available at Fornabow's H Street Arena will be used for larger than even last year's edition. An audience will be present during the shows, unlike last year, but it has yet to be confirmed how many people will be in the venue. In Italy, Rai have confirmed the San Remo format. Uh, the, um, they had previously teased changes ahead of next year's festival, uh, with the Nuovo Proposta category being dropped. Um, publication of the official rules uh, for the format changes have now been revealed. Um, our district director and host, Amadeus, outlined some potential changes previously, um, including a reduction of the number of artists competing in the Campione category, shortening the runtime of the show, and a return of the live audience. But another change that's now been revealed is that the San Remo Orchestra will no longer have a vote. Instead, members of the press in San Remo Press Centre will vote on the first two night. As it was last year, the broadcaster has remained uh, clear that there is a connection between San Remo and the Eurovision candidacy. Acts will once more need to confirm their intention to participate in Eurovision in the event that they won the festival, but Rai retains the right to select the representative if the winner refuses. So, of course, Festival is still very much its own entity, and the maximum length of songs is four minutes rather than the EVU's requirement of three. Um, so that is uh, the, 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 the tweak in format there. As we say, um, there will be a uh, press jury on both the first two nights. Now, um, the demoscopic and televote will take place on night three. Night four will combine the press jury, demoscopic jury, and the televote before. Uh, and that will com- that will reveal the combined ranking of those first four nights. Um, before then, on night five, that's going to set up every all 24 acts will perform their competing songs for the final time. There will be the televote as well as then in the super final, uh, the winner will be decided 34% televote, 33% press jury, and 33% democratic jury. Um, so, not too many real changes there, but uh, the, 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 the change... Um, that we didn't really know we were going to get with the orchestra losing their right to vote. Um, Montenegro has opened their Eurovision 2022 submissions. The deadline is December the 10th. Um, we, unlike their point, yeah, unlike their previous two entries, their comeback will be selected internally via a points-based system. City singers uh, must have Montenegrin citizenship, but songwriters, regardless of nationality, are invited to compete in the selection process with up to two songs. Songs released prior to October the 1st are not eligible to compete, despite the EBU requirement being September the 1st. Deadline, as we say, is December the 10th, and after this date, a jury will assess all of the songs based on the following criteria. 50 points available for the song itself, 30 points for the lyrics, and 20 points available also for the production potential of the piece itself. So the maximum points an entry can receive is 100, and the highest scoring entry will win the ticket to win. Um, we have heard from Spain uh, that they have extended their deadline for the Beneform Benedorm Fest submission. The new deadline, November the 10th, um, RTVE announced um, last week that they had extended the deadline as they are receiving many proposals from relevant artists and they felt the need to extend the deadline to have more scope to send proposals of the highest possible quality. In parallel, so that there is a level playing field, we've also extended the date for sending applications through the web as well. So on September 29th, they opened applications for lyricists, composers, and performers. Um, and, and like I say, they, they are receiving some great proposals and they therefore have extended their deadline by an extra two weeks. So it runs, as I say now, until uh, November the 10th. Submissions have opened for Dora as well in Croatia. Um, we knew um, that with the uh, with with HRC coming into this year's contest again, that the uh, con- they, they would return to Dora to select their entry. Uh, until November 25th, singers from Croatia and songwriters from across the globe can submit their entry. 14 will be shortlisted for Dora, plus four reserved. And the competing songs will be selected by HRC, the Croatian Music Union, and the Croatian Society of Composers. The winner, and therefore Croatia's entry for Turin, will be determined by public televote and a jury. Furthermore, rules state that winning songs may no longer undergo a major revamp following the selection, with only minor modifications allowed, and they have to be permitted by HRT. Uh, and finally, uh, JP, two small, artists, uh, two small stories here for you. Um, there has been a rumour coming through uh, in the UK from Metro newspaper that Chelsea Grimes is maybe one of the people in the running to represent the UK next year, either 
as a singer or just as a songwriter. She has written songs for other tap acts, including Dua Lipa, as well as other well-known artists, including Kyla Minogue, The Saturdays, and Dolly Murs. Uh, she has released her own uh, songs herself, including Just Like That and Girls, and um, was part of the BBC Eurovision team in 2021. She then wrote Wonderland for Roxanne and Alexander Ryback last year. So uh, in Metro, they reported that, um, that um, Chelsea, with not just being a fun person in their own right, an extremely gifted songwriter, makes complete sense that the UK bosses may want her to help with their entry if her schedule allowed. And it would be a huge statement of intent for the UK's entry if they could get her on board. Um, so as we say, she's already managed by Tap Music, um, so there is a link right there. Um, and we'll just have to see whether it will be uh, with Chelsea Grimes involved in the song itself or whether even she goes back to Eurovision with the BBC as part of their coverage. We'll have to wait and see. Um, the final small piece of news, JK, is in the OGAE Song Contest 2021. Australia broke the United Kingdom's three-year grip on the contest. Uh, and it was uh, the song contest, the OGAE Song Contest, was uh, won by Australia with uh, Fly Away by Tones and I, of course, the very famous Australian singer for Dance Monkey a couple of years ago. Um, her um, her great, actually, it's a really great um, kind of gospel-inspired um, electro-pop single, Fly Away, uh, won the contest. Erica Vickman came second for Finland uh, with Sintus from Puy Bar. And for the United Kingdom, who have won the previous three editions, they still came third uh, with Head and Heart by Joel Curry and Emily Kerr. And so that is the OGAE Song Contest result uh, as well for you, JP. But that is all the news from me. Wow, that was uh, a really big, big news delivery uh, this week. Thank you very much, Nathan. We're, we're looking forward to all the latest. Uh, do we actually have already some hosts for the junior contest? Um, we, we are still awaiting um, confirmation, JP, um, of, the, uh, of the hosts, of course, for, for, for the 2022 Eurovision Song Contest. But we are also still awaiting hosts for the 2021 junior Eurovision Song Contest. Um, you know, it, the French have so many amazing television presenters, JP, that I am sure that they will have one ready and lined up very shortly wow. to tell us about. <laughs> All right, super. We're looking forward to this. Now, uh, thank you very much for the news. And we got a request now. We're sending out to Latvia, to Davi Freer's Latvian twins. And uh, uh, he wanted, or she, uh, they wanted to have, Brink from the Eurovision Song Contest 2009. Remember, believe again. Do you remember that, Nathan? I do. I do indeed. It was written by Ronan Keating. Ah, wow. Yes, indeed. That ama that was amazing, actually. Yes, indeed. So <laughs> I knew, I, I, It's one of my favorite facts, JP, because it just proves that there are really talented singers and songwriters who are interested in the Eurovision Song Contest. And sometimes they just happen to give their songs away. Um, the other one, JP, um, Ella Eyre, the British singer, she co-wrote Black Smoke for Amsterdam. Um, so there you go. There's my two little songwriter facts of the day for you. Fabulous. Hey, thank you very much, Nathan. And we'll chat again next week. We will, JP. Speak to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Hey.
had a picture of me. That was taking us back to 2009. Nils and uh, Nils Brink uh, and the uh, stage name just Brink. Believe again, number 13 at the Eurovision Song Contest 2009 for Denmark. And that was for Davi Freer's Latvian Twins over there in Latvia. Thank you very much for requesting that nice piece of music uh, that we haven't heard for quite some time. Now, uh, we got our next slot coming up. It's going to be the Eurovision Spotlight. For that, I have to prepare you because it's a Eurovision Lordship. And remember, when the, uh, the Lordship Lordship comes on, you do have to bow, okay? Now, we're going to have the Lordship on in about 41 seconds after we've heard from Kieran Tatiet's Eurovision show. Here in the United Kingdom, the Eurovision Song Contest has mostly a negative image across the media. For one man every Sunday, 5 p.m. is going to help change that. Join Kieran Ari Tuttiot for the Eurovision Showcase on Forest FM. He'll be playing you the greatest tunes from the world's greatest singing competition, giving you some quirky facts and having a little bit of a laugh. So join Kieran every Sunday at 5 p.m. on Forest FM. For more details, head over to the Facebook page, www www.facebook.com slash ESC showcase the Eurovision showcase on Forest FM there is no need to be making your mind up you are listening to the Radio International with JP JP Eurovision Spotlight on Radio International. This week... No, it's, it's the Eurovision Lordship. I'm really nervous now and my fingers are not the same. Uh, so, uh, Eurovision Lordship, I'm bowing. Marcus Keppel Palmer is with us. Hello, Marcus. Oh, greetings to you, JP. Greetings to everyone out there in Radio International land. Yes, it's the uh, carbon-friendly, carbon-zero uh, Eurovision Lord. Yes, ah. I've deci decided I'm, I, I'm not going to be flying over to visit you, JP, for the show today. I'm going to be doing it at home, thus saving fossil fuels. Yes, indeed, indeed, yeah. And uh, um, it's also anyway safer from, from uh, the ivory tower in Bristol. Ah, yes, I'm, I'm looking out across the... Uh, well, across the harbour area here in Bristol from the Ivory Towers and I'm looking down at uh, all of the protesting peasants that are coming around. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there we go. There we go. Actually, I, I feel definitely uh, in esteemed company there to have heard Brink, your voice, and Kieran's voice all before mine. So uh, yeah. there you go. Um, <laughs> it's a good evening for me, JP. I'm in fine fettle and great form, uh, even though the nights are dark, the mornings are dark, and, uh, you know, the mood is dark because it's yet to have a Eurovision song selected for next year. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe that will all change by the time we get on. Anyway, I should say to you, Buena Sera. JP, Buena Sera. Buena uh, Sera, Don Eurovision. <laughs> Don, uh, Don Key Marcus, so yes, yeah. something like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, I do know that my esteemed colleagues like uh, Chris and Ross and Ali and Dermot and uh, Tom uh, um, have, have been uh, playing out some of the songs that have been representing the host country for next year. And uh, a fine selection of songs they are. But I thought, as always, JP, I'd put a little spin on it. Because the Italian language has been heard at Eurovision, not just in songs that have represented Italy, but in a number of other countries' uh, 
contestants. And so I thought, JP, with your blessing and pleasure, we might play a couple of those. Is that going to be all right? It's our big, big, big pleasure, my friend. Uh, well, in which case, JP, let's start with the winner from 2008. You, uh, but Dima Bilan never sang in Italian. Yes, but Dima <laughs> Bilan was not the real winner. <laughs> this, from Switzerland 2008, still the greatest song ever to have been in Eurovision. Uh, it's uh, Era Stupendo. By Paolo Meneguzzi. Switzerland. 2008. C'è una parte di me Che tacere non sa Quando Guardo l'odio che c'è Il dolore La povertà Mi rivedo Meneguzzi and Era Stupendo, the Swiss entry to the Eurovision Song Contest 2008. Uh, unfortunately, this one didn't even come into the final. It ended up second semi-final number 13, which in fact was a big mistake. It should definitely have been in the final and according to the Eurovision Lordship, even win the Eurovision Song Contest uh, in 2008. Abso absolutely, JP, the best song uh, since... Uh Gente Di Mari in Eurovision, I think. Uh, and there we go. I'm actually looking at my uh, DVD promotional, um, well, promotional film that uh, Paolo Meneguzzi signed for me uh, in 2008 uh, of Era Stupendo, which is uh, well worth having. A, a, a treasure it is. Uh, but on, on from uh, Paolo Meneguzzi, of course, Switzerland. Uh, one of the countries whose uh, language, official language, is Italian in part, and therefore they've uh, obviously performed in Italian, um, not on the majority of their entries, but certainly on, on one or two. And we will have another Swiss entry later on. But uh, Italian is, of course, the language that uh, opera 
started off in. Uh, if you think of some of the greatest operas of all time, they've been in the bel canto or verismo Italian styles from the days of Monteverdi through Verdi, Rossini and Bellini. And of course, it makes sense that opera has also found its way into Eurovision. And of course, in this case, representing Latvia for reasons that pass all understanding. But I love this one too. This is it from 2007. Do you remember this one, JP? Oh yes, of course. It, it features the 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 singer, lead singer, uh, um, uh, 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 from uh, the Wolves of the Sea. Exactly, Roberto Belloni, I think, or oh, Meloni. Maloney, 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 yeah, Maloney. It's all, <laughs> it's all rhymes. This is Bonaparte. Dot LV, and JP. It's this evening, tonight, Cuesta Notte, Latvia, two thousand and seven. E il sorriso dolce da bambina che mi incanta E mi fa vibrare il cuore E il mare nei tuoi occhi vedi che mi chiama E mi fa sentire l'amore Quando sembra buio tu mi fai vedere il sole What an entry from uh, Latvia at the Eurovision Song Contest. It hit number 16 and it was sung in Italian by Bonaparte LV, Castanotte. Nice, uh, nice yes. choice, Lordship. Thank you, JP. I, I mean, it's a great song, isn't it? To be honest, anything sung in Italian just sounds magnificent. It is really the language of love. Mm. And it doesn't really matter how right the words are they always sound wonderful um, in, in italian and of course anything with the words questa and amore and stuff like that just sounds great I, and you know i i know it's perhaps not quite the style that's ever going to win but uh weren't il volo magnificent jp if you remember them oh yes of course uh, 2015 that was uh, number three uh, 
a grand amour, uh, and that should have won too, as as well. Anyway, let's uh, let's move away from uh, Latvia to a country that is more likely to sing in Italian, and of course that's the tiny principality, the postage stamp. <laughs> that is San Marino. <laughs> and you may remember, JP, that San Marino first entered uh, in 2008. I think it was a mistake, but uh, yeah. there you go. They they accidentally sent an application in, and uh, <laughs> there they are. And over the years, of course, have given us such wonderful moments as um, the San Marino jury and the San Marino televote. But uh, I'm going to go for the opening uh, number from San Marino. Miodio, if you remember them. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of the very few artists from San Marino who don't seem to have appeared year in, year out uh, in the contest. And their first entry was, of course, uh, in Italian, Complice. And this one didn't trouble the scorers very much. Uh, It uh, failed to get out of the semi-final. It came last in 2008 in the semi-final. So, uh, San Marino. Anyway. Two thousand and eight. Mai avrei pensato a te come mia complice, capace di capire ogni mia gioia o pianto, la pace di un momento. And this is by Mi Audio, and that's uh, from the uh, San Marino postcard state or <laughs> the stamped state, as uh, Marcus called them. Uh, uh, and uh, that one was the uh, debut entry from San Marino at the Eurovision Song Contest 2008, and didn't make it make anything. Number 19 in semi-final one, uh, and very possibly deserving of place 19 in semi-final one but uh, mm. there we go let's uh, let's move on to a language that is uh, a country with a language that is very similar to italian and that of course is romania and uh, what, what a, a tremendous run romania had of entries in the well certainly in the uh, 
2000s, I would say, probably their finest songs. And one of them was uh, performed uh, substantially in Italian, so I thought I'd shoehorn that in. And one of my favorite, uh, favorite contestants ever, Mihai, Mihai Trastario, who uh, I can't remember, JP, if you were there, but I first met him at uh, one of the German OJE UK, no, not UK, Germany um, conventions in Munich uh, mm. many years ago when he was part of a, a Romanian duo called Valahia. Were you for that, there for mm, that one, JP? No, I, I don't think so, no. I, I have to have to remember, but I, I, not at the moment, I can't tell you. Ah, so, well, uh, well, th there they were. I know that they performed in the Romanian pre-selection uh, at that time, possibly mm. 2002, but, I, you know, the memory fails me, JP, at the moment. Uh, but, of course, Mihai came in and performed in Athens uh, very much as one of the favourites and ended up finishing fourth. And uh, a great song. I think we all, we all love this one, the uh, disco dancing Tornero. 2006. Romania. We'll dance together. It was Tornero by Mihai Traistario at the Eurovision Song Contest 2006, hit number four for Romania. And indeed, in 2002, I was not in Munich. I now remember. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, JP. Let's move straight on. I, we opened up with a, a Swiss song. I think we should hear the very first Swiss song that was performed entirely in Italian. Uh, it came from 1960, so a little bit before Mihai and the others that we played so far. Uh, this is Anita Traversi and uh, Cielo e Terra, uh, Heaven and Earth. And, Switzerland. Uh, oh, sorry for I that. Think this came eighth, JP. Wow, okay, let's go and have a listen. 1960. <laughs>
Anita Traversi and Cielo de Terra. Number, number eight at the Eurovision Song Contest back in 1960, six years before I was made. And that was a Swiss entry, sang in Italian. Uh, wasn't that good, JP? And, Very um, nice. As always, it's been a delight to pop in from the uh, towers here in Bristol and to uh, talk to you. And, and it's there. I would say in Italian, questa notte era stupendo. Tonight <laughs> it was great. Uh, thank you very much indeed for allowing me on, JP. I'm going to leave us all with uh, another uh, Italian song from the Baltic States. And I think many of us will probably remember that just back in 2018, uh, La Forza was the representative song from Estonia. And that too came eighth. Maybe that's what you want to do, JP. If you, if you are stuck at the bottom, like, uh, oh, I don't know, Germany, UK, Spain, maybe the answer is sing in Italian and you'll come eighth. Well, maybe that would be a good idea. Let's go and suggest that one to German television then. Uh, let's do that now. <laughs> anyway, JP, whilst we go and ring up ARD... And let's, BBC uh, as hear, well. <laughs> let's hear La Forza. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much, Marcus. Lord, your vision Lordship in Bristol. Until the next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Look forward to it. Bye. Bye. Estonia. 2018. across the globe this is radio international you're listening to radio international with jp hello we're from belgium and you're listening to jp on radio international and this is our song the wrong This is Benny Cristo from Czech Republic. You're listening to Radio International with JP. And this is my song, Oh My God. Enjoy, guys. Hello, guys. This is Elena Tagrinou from Cyprus. You're listening to Radio International with JP. And this is my song, El Diablo. Enjoy. Estonia. Hi, 
Hello, this is Stieg and Elena from Estonia. And you're listening to Radio International with JP. And this is our song Goodbye to Yesterday. Enjoy. Enjoy. I woke up at 6 a.m. My eyes were closed, but my mind was awake. Pretended I was breathing in a deep sleep pace. Got dressed so quietly. I was frozen by the jingle on my keys at the door As I got outside, smiled to the door Indeedy, and we're there for the fourth hour of this week's edition of Radio International, the ultimate Eurovision experience. In case you missed the last three hours, fear not, you can always catch up on different means. I tell you now, on the weekends, you get three radio stations broadcasting the show. So not, not to confuse you now, because it's going to be a name change of radio stations as well. So uh, I'm, I'm putting it all on our website at www.radiointernational.tv. So it will be on uh, Saturday and Sunday lunchtimes on two radio stations. Uh, Saturdays on Run FM, which will then be called Switch Radio Yorkshire. Okay, and then on Sundays, on Switch Dunmo, becoming Switch Radio Essex. All right, and the shows will be broadcast from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central European Time. That's the weekend airing on those stations. And there is also South Norfolk Radio in the United Kingdom, broadcasting the show from 1 to 4 p.m. Central European Time. Sorry, it's 1 to 5 p.m., that is. Then we are on Radio 105 in sunny Malta on Tuesdays from 9 p.m. Central European Time and on Go Go Radio Gibraltar on Friday evenings at 10 p.m. Central European Time, kickstarting the weekend. All right, and in case you missed any of the broadcasts on the radio stations, a copy of the show is available on our website on Radio International. 
I give you the website once again. It's www.radiointernational.tv. Simply download the copy there. Big thanks to Emily DeForest, the winner of Eurovision 2013, coming on in our second hour today, together with uh, our co-interviewers John and Salman. To Nathan for the news. To Eurovision Lordship Marcus Keppel Palmer. In the last hour, taking a look at songs performed uh, at the Eurovision Song Contest in Italian, but not by Italian artists. But more to this coming up, of course, in uh, uh, the weeks to come uh, as we're heading towards Italy 2022 to Torino for the Eurovision Song Contest then. But in our fourth hour today, in this hour, we've got the Eurovision cover spot coming up as well as some junior Eurovision stuff and, of course, all your requests. We kicked off the set today in this hour with uh, Elena Born and Stieg Resta. They represented Estonia at the Eurovision Song Contest 2015, made number seven with Goodbye to Yesterday. But do you remember who this young artist actually was? Hello, this is Marco Mangoni from Italy. You are listening to Radio International with JP. And this is my song, L'Essenziale. 2013. Italy. Sostengono gli eroi Se il gioco si fa duro è da giocare Beati loro poi Se scambiano le offese con il bene Succede anche a noi Di far la guerra e ambire poi alla pace E nel silenzio mio Annullo ogni tuo singolo dolore per apprezzare quello che non ho saputo scegliere. E mentre il mondo cade a pezzi, io compongo nuovi spazi e desideri. Appartengono anche a te, che da sempre sei per me l'essenziale. Non accetterò un altro errore di valutazione, l'amore in grado di celarsi dietro amabili parole che ho pronunciato. Sarò forte e stupide E mentre il mondo cade a pezzi Io compongo nuovi spazi e desideri che Appartengono anche a te E mentre il mondo cade a pezzi Mi allontano da Marco Mangoni and L'Essenziale reached number 7 at the Eurovision Song Contest in 2013 for Bella Italia. It was the year that Emily de Forest won the Eurovision Song Contest in Malmö's Arena in Sweden. Now, uh, we got a request for Marco's new song, Francesca Santaborgio in Milano wants to hear Cambia un uomo, which means change a man. And that's brand new from Marco Mangoni. <laughs> New. New, 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 new. Dimmi di riprovare, ma non di rinunciare. Perché di ca- 
cose perse, lo sai sono un campione Se questo nostro amore avesse già un finale Probabilmente adesso bestemmierei il tuo nome Ma se tutte le paure specchi, non siamo così vecchi colpa dei miei difetti che hanno sgradito i tuoi riflessi mm, ma tu ancora mentre volo tu sbadigli ridi mentre penso a quali non mi darei i nostri figli vedi potremmo essere questi però invece ancora scherzi Cambio un uomo, 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 that is. Cambia un uomo. Marco Mengoni from Bella Italia. Brand new song he released just last Friday. And that's for Francesca Sant'Ambrogio in Italy, in Milano. And she's going to go to Torino, she told me. Now, we open up the fourth hour, not for nothing, with Elina Born and Stig Resta because Elina Born has got a new song out. And we're going to hear it right now. It's called Linotype. <laughs> New, 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 new.
Well, there you go. That is a new song by Elena Bourne, and it's Lino Tide, and that's brand new out of Estonia this week. And I got some some news now from Germany, actually. Uh, Salman, who we heard in the interview with uh, Emily de Forest, just sent me a message saying that uh, Germany has decided and published the uh, information about Eurovision 2022. Uh, it's going to be called Unser Lied für Turin, uh, which means Our Song for Torino. And it's going to be a TV show on German television in March. They haven't select, uh, told us yet about the, the exact date, but it's going to be in March sometime. And it's going to be five songs and 100% televoting. That should, should be interesting uh, to see. So, uh, so there will be a little final there. And uh, the, 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 the public de decides who to send to uh, Turin to represent Germany at the Eurovision Song Contest. From Germany, we're heading over to Belgium next. And uh, it's coming up. In fact, it is a request for uh, Robert Wahlström in Gothenburg in Sweden. And he'd like to listen to Louis Nerves from the Eurovision Song Contest in 1967. He reached number seven at the Eurovision Song Contest back then. And it was the Belgium entry called Ich hab Sorgen. I have sorrows. Let's go and have a listen to it. Belgium. 1967. Oh, oh, ik heb zorgen, oh, oh, ik heb zorgen, oh, oh, ik heb zorgen en dat verveelt me zo. Oh, 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 ik heb zorgen, oh, oh, ik heb zorgen, oh, oh, ik heb zorgen en dat verveelt me zo. Oh, 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 oh. Zij was zo mooi, mooi als een lentelied, mooi. Kon ze niet zijn, zij was zo mooi, mooi als men zelden ziet, en er was maneschijn. Oh, oh, ik heb zorgen, oh, oh, ik heb zorgen, oh, oh, ik heb zorgen, en dat verveelt me zo. Oh, 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 oh. Haar eerste zoen, zoen, die kwam net op tijd. Oh, wat een zoen en ik dacht toen laat ons die heerlijkheid nog maar eens overdoen oh, oh, ik heb zorgen oh, oh, ik heb zorgen oh, oh, ik heb zorgen en dat verveelt me zo oh, 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 oh. ergens heel ver ver in een denneboom zong toen die nacht de gauw en hij bracht mij de allerliefste droom en die werd mij fataal. Oh, oh, ik heb zorgen, oh, oh, ik heb zorgen, oh, oh, ik heb zorgen en dat verveelt me zo. Oh, 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 oh. Ik heb zorgen, oh, oh. Ik heb zorgen, oh, oh, ik heb zorgen, en dat verveelt me zo. Oh, oh, oh. Louis Nerves for Belgium, oh, oh, oh. for Belgium in 1967. Oh, ik heb zorgen. Ik heb zorgen. Oh, Hit number seven for Robbie in Gothenburg in Sweden. Oh, oh, oh. And our next request is going to go to, from the 60s, we're going to take you into the uh, 1980s and uh, to a country that we dearly would like to have back at the Eurovision Song Contest, uh, but uh, the government doesn't want to, uh, want to allow to have Turkey, Turkish singers back to the Eurovision Song Contest. And it's a big, it's a big shame. And uh, uh, let's go and listen to a request for Flamingo. And uh, he would like to have... Pan from 1989 and the song uh, came 21st with the song Bana Bana for Turkey. 1989. Shake your bellies. Give us 
geçer sen sen That was uh, some tough stuff there. Bana Bana from Pan, Group Pan, in other words, and uh, they hit 21 for Turkey in 1989, and that was a request for Flamingo. The next request we're going to send out to Mario in Mexico for a young lady by the name of, uh, oh, she's going to tell yourself. Hi, this is Dihash. I'm from Azerbaijan. You're listening to Radio International with JP, and this is my song called Skeletons. Enjoy. 
Dihaj Skeletons and the Eurovision Song Contest 2017 for Azerbaijan hit number 14 and that was a request from Mario in Mexico in Mexico and Dihaj of course that was all happening in Kiev and from Kiev we go to a Eurovision Song Contest and then, that unfortunately did actually not happen but the national selections were, uh, did happen and she won the national selection in Latvia 2020. Hi there, this is Samantha Tino from Latvia and you are listening to Radio International with GP and this is my song Still Breathing. Enjoy it. Latvia. the ghost uh, and that is stop breathing by samantha tina and uh, that was selected in latvia in 2020 but then that contest as we know was cancelled and it was actually a request for um our dear amigo from spain uh, alexander sanchez and he p put my nose on to samantha's got a new song out and i'd like to listen to it and she released that also last week let's go and have a listen to nemas nemas this is samantha tina from Latvia on the way next, right here on Radio International. This is Radio International, the ultimate Eurovision experience. New. 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 Nekad, nekad, nekad tu ono jauna ne sad Tagad man lako znao vajs, ne vijem što smo mac Pitem pje mani zvajs, tu ludu ne nad Žovac, slikac, zvajrat, vaj mazat i stad Nekad ne pijet me sanat
nemaz, 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 vairs tik ļoti nesāp. Bet citu vēl tik drīz par sāp un nesāp. Tas ir tikai ļoti atkal nesāp. Kas man pāds sliktāks, vairāk vai mazāk uz toga nekā. The new sound of Samantha Tina and Nemas Nemas. She also represented uh, Latvia at the Eurovision Song Contest 2021. But this is a new song released last week and that's from Latvia. Now we are moving back to London now to Studio 3 and we have got David Mann for this week's edition of the Eurovision Cover Spot. Radio International. Oh, I love it. Europe's number one. Yeah. You're listening to The Cover Spot on Radio International. Welcome again to the Eurovision Cover Spot here on Radio International where the focus this week moves to our 2022 host country, Italy, and the song that brought the contest back to their shores after a gap of 31 years, Moleskine's Zitti e Buoni. Loro non sanno di che parlo, vestiti sporchi fra di fango, giallo di siga fra le dita, io con la siga camminando. Scusami ma ci credo tanto, che posso fare questo salto, e anche se la strada è in salita, per questo ora mi sto allenando e buonasera, signore e signori, fuori gli attori, vi conviene non fare più errori, vi conviene stare zitti e buoni, qui la gente è strana tipo spacciatori, troppe notti stavo chiuso fuori, mo li prendo a calcio sti portoni, sguardo in alto tipo scalatori, quindi scusa mamma se sono sempre fuori, ma sono fuori di te. Io ho scritto pagine e pagine, ho visto sale e poi lacrime Questi uomini in macchina non scalare le rapide Ho scritto sopra una lapide, in casa mia non c'è Dio Ma se trovi il senso del tempo risalirei dal tuo brio E non c'è vento che fermi la naturale potenza Dal punto giusto di vista del vento senti le prezze Con all'incera la schiena ricercherò quell'altezza Se vuoi fermarmi di testa prova a tagliarmi la testa perché Sono fuori di testa, ma diverso da loro E tu sei fuori di testa
Corner Skin with Zitti e Buoni, the song they took to victory first at Italy's San Remo Song Festival and then on the 2021 Eurovision stage in Rotterdam in May and then of course went on to conquer the global music charts, making number one in several European countries, topping the UK rock and metal singles chart for seven weeks and making it to number 17 on the main UK singles chart and becoming the first Italian language song in the top 20 of the UK for 30 years. Zitti Oboni, written by band members Damiano David, Ethan Torcio, Thomas Reggie and Victoria De Angelis, also opened the door to the USA for the group, making number 10 on the Billboard chart. That's the sound of Olena Yusenko, now 14, with Never Get Free, the song she sang at Ukraine's 2020 Junior Eurovision Selection Show. Something of a veteran already of television talent shows, including The Voice Kids in Ukraine, and of course many other festivals and singing competitions, Olena, who comes from Bilat Serkva, a city about 80 kilometres south of the Ukrainian capital Kiev, studies at the Catapulta Arts and Music School and plays drums as well as being a vocalist. This year, of course, Olena won the Ukrainian Television Junior Eurovision Selection Show from a field of 11 finalists with her original song Vasil, which she'll be performing at Junior Eurovision on stage in Paris in December. Recently, at the 2021 Gold Star Festival in Kiev, with valuable cash prizes up for grabs, as well as an array of diplomas, cups and certificates for both the winners and the participants, Olena Yusenko joined forces with one of her fellow students at the Catapulta Arts and Music School, Anastasia Sizova, for an entry into the Gold Star Festival, presenting a cover version of this year's Italian Eurovision winning song. So, with a version of the song specially arranged by Katarina Komar, here are Anastasia Sisova and Ukraine's 2021 Junior Eurovision representative Olena Yuzenko with their cover of Italy's 2021 adult Eurovision winning song, Zitti e Buoni.
Well, thank you very much, David Mann, for this week's edition of the Eurovision Cover Spot, featuring the winning song of Eurovision 2021. Let's now have something from Javier Leal. Our Calendar Man. Check this out. Hello, everyone, listening to Eurovision International. This is Javier Leal in Montreal, Canada, reporting this very special music event organized by the Dutch production company Pilot Studio. I'm talking about He Rote Schoen Festival Fest. After the cancellation of the traditional Eurovision in concert in 2020 and 2021, another big concert with numerous ESC artists is now planned in the Netherlands. He Rote Schoen Festival Fest will take place on Thursday. December the 9th, 2021, in the Ziggo Dome in Amsterdam, the largest multipurpose hall in the country. A total of 32 acts, including 22 winners, stood on the stage for the very first edition in 2019. 17,000 spectators fit into the arena. 100% of the seats and 75% of the standing spaces are now for sale. In the Netherlands, people older than 13 years old would probably need a corona passport in December in order to attend concerts in general. 22 ads are already known to be there this year. Tickets for the show cost between 37 and a half euros and 77 and a half euros. These 22 ads are already known or and have already agreed to be part of the Hood Song Festival Fest uh, 2021 as of today, Wednesday, October 13, 2021. And they are Brotherhood of Men, Carola, Destiny, Eleni Fureira, John Steers, Goa, Reyes, Imani, John Logan, Keino, Christian Kostov, Lenny Kur, Lorien, Maria Sherifovic, Mikhail Schutte, Netta, Ojin, Sandra Kien, Serta Erner, Stefania, The Roop, and Verka Serduchka. If you have a chance, feel free to visit www.radiointernational.tv and the link for ticket purchase will be provided there. Have a fantastic time and JP, thank you so much for allowing me to share such a piece of news with you all and let the good Eurovision music play on. Cheers! Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Javier Leal in Montreal, who did this one, this preview to this big Eurovision event that's scheduled to happen on the 9th of December in Amsterdam. Now, we have time for a couple of more tunes, and one is going to be the Junior Eurovision Song Contest entry, the best placed ever for Albania. The Junior Eurovision Song Contest on Radio International with JP. 2015. Albania. Michela Rappo now Dambaye. I tell you what, when we finish the show, you're gonna be singing that one all night long. Dimini mi dammaie, dimini mi dammaie, dimini mi dammaie, dimini 
Michela Rappo at the Junior Eurovision Song Contest for Albania, achieving the best placing for the country at number five in 2015, Dambaye. You're going to be humming this all night long, I tell you, I warned you. Now, playing out today with a piece of music that won German Pop Idol in 2002, which was the best ever result. I beg your pardon, it was the first ever one happening, but also it was uh, a gentleman that uh, went on to strong things in his career. Alexander Klafs now, Take Me Tonight. The first winner of Deutschland sucht den Superstar or German Pop Idol in 2002. The link to Eurovision there is that Ilse de Lange from the Common Linnets, who represented the Netherlands in 2014, is going to be in the jury in the 19th season of German Pop Idol, which is going to be in 2022. Let me also th say thank you very much to everybody out there on the Radio Land for joining us on the show today. Hope you enjoyed it, as well as to our guest Emily de Forest. John and Salman for co-interviewing with me with me the winner of Eurovision 2013. Nathan for the latest news from ESCXL.com to David Mann for the cover spot and the birthday file and to the Eurovision Lord Marcus Keppel Palmer for the Eurovision Spotlight. I'll see you all again next week. And we're working on another new artist to come on to the show. Take care and have a great time. Bye bye. Me tonight. Anything is possible.